program, which is why I'm taking a senior English class. And just get this is background information. But uh, today my presentation is about uh, sports nutrition as it applies to uh, strength-based athletes. Uh, I chose that, uh, I'll get into it more specifically in a second here, but I chose it pretty much because I play strength-based sports, you know, football and whatnot. <clears throat> so what is sports nutrition? Uh, if sports nutrition is something you're unaware of, it's basically the study and practice of uh, sports nutrition almost on like a scientific level as it relates to us uh, uh, performance. So recently, over I'd say the last few decades, people have really become aware of uh, the impact good nutrition can have on performance at all levels, whether you're just a weekend warrior or you're someone getting paid millions of dollars a game. So uh, with that newfound emphasis, uh, you know, people have become, are becoming more aware of what is needed. Um, so, as I said earlier, I'm doing strength, um, covering strength-based uh, sports, and that's because every sport, uh, based on goals and whatnot, will have slightly different variations of sports nutrition. That being said, there are four main points of emphasis for sport for strength nutrition, which is off-season nutrition, on-season nutrition, uh, competition nutrition, which uh, relates specifically to like game day nutrition. And then there's always additional supplementation. So let's move on to off-season nutrition. Um, so basically, the main goal of off-season uh, for most strength athletes is going to be able to, to bulk up, you know, to add some muscle, add some weight to your frame, just to give you that advantage uh, for the upcoming season. Uh, common sense tells us that in order to gain weight, you need to eat more calories than you burn. Uh, that exact number of calories is roughly 3,500 calories in excess of what you burn to equal a pound of increased body mass. That equates to be a pound a week would be 500 excess calories a day. And um, by getting the right diet, you can ensure that the majority of that weight is going to be lean body mass instead of uh, being high in fat. So some keys to doing that, in order, uh, just to give you a picture, Reggie Henderson talking his about how many calories athletes burn on a daily basis. When you're bulking up, you're probably going to want to eat about 4,000 calories if you're um, you know, a high performance athlete. Uh, so in order to do that, it's key to eat three or four times, or uh, sorry, more than three or four times a day, maybe even five or six times throughout the day, just to constantly have nutrients getting into your body. So I'm gonna get in this next slide, talk about the right calorie blend. <clears throat> Protein is kind of everybody's favorite nutrient when it comes to building muscle. Uh, simply put, you can't build muscle without protein because muscle is built up of amino acids, which is what protein is. Uh, with that being said, uh, the rule of thumb for how, many, how much protein you should ingest is roughly one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So for example, myself, uh, I weigh around 215 pounds, so every day I aim to get in around 215 uh, grams of protein. With that being said, it's gonna be important that I know I exactly can't measure out every bit of protein, but if you're gonna err, it's usually best to err um, in excess than by getting too much protein rather than too little protein. Um, next, the kind of hidden warrior of uh, weight gaining is carbohydrates. Uh, carbohydrates are going to be the most effective source of fuel for the body uh, during exercise. And when you obviously when you exercise, you're going to be burning off uh, what's called what's known as glycogen, which is basically the stored form of energy in your muscles. And carbohydrates are going to be the best way to replenish that glycogen. So if you're not eating enough carbs throughout the day, what ends up happening is uh, the protein you'll take in will get converted um, just into that energy. So um, nothing's, nothing's worse than you know working hard to build muscle just to have that muscle stripped down just to uh, be able to live and you know have energy. So it's going to be important to eat a large amount of carbohydrates. Um, in the case for bulking up, uh, the best way to go would to get your car carbs from whole food sources such as uh, uh, pasta, bread, and you're going to want to avoid uh, sugary stuff like just drinking, you know, 10 cans of Pepsi a day or something. Uh, next is going to be your fats. Uh, a lot of times fats are given a bad rep because people think if you eat fat, you're going to get fat, which isn't necessarily true. That being said, you don't want to go overboard on fats and you're going to emphasize on healthy fats, which would come from, you know, things like olive oil, just those healthy fats, you know, without being too scientific, I'm going to move on. Uh, on-season nutrition is kind of the next step. Um, 
I put up their cutting phase. That uh, doesn't necessarily apply to all strength-based athlete, athletes, so I won't really mention it too much. It's more for something for if you're like a bodybuilder. I have up there in the corner uh, Lee Priest, who's kind of a, a famous bodybuilder, I guess, and it shows the difference between what he looks like in the off-season versus his competition season. And so the cutting phase, basically, like I talked about, eating 500 extra calories a day, you're going to eat 500 um, less calories than what you burn a day to, for that cutting phase, if you're an athlete who does that. Um, but anyway, as far as the actual on-season goes, most athletes are going to need uh, a different blend of calories because uh, although they might not be exercising in a longer duration, uh, their exercise is going to be uh, more intense and uh, more exerting, so they're going to be burning a lot more calories. So that being said, you're still going to eat throughout the day, but your calorie burning is going to be kind of different. Protein is still going to be around a gram per day, but uh, you may choose different sources of protein, ones that will uh, be, be digested more slowly so that that protein will uh, be effective throughout the entire day since you may not be eating a large of a quantity of food since you're not necessarily looking to add weight, you're just kind of looking to maintain. Uh, carbohydrates are going to become uh, really increased in demand. Like I talked about earlier, when you exercise, you, uh, you're going to be burning that glycogen in your muscle, and it's important to replace that. So, say like, immediately after practice, that's when things like juice, those sugary things, are going to be beneficial because those types of simple sugars are going to get directly to your muscles. But at the same time, you're still going to eat those whole food sources of carbs, such as, uh, like I said, pasta and whatnot, because those will give you a continuous supply because they're a uh, slower digesting food. And then fats, you're still going to want to utilize those healthy fats because um, you know fats are needed for bodily func functions. So next, I have here uh, the competition nutrition. Um, Basically, when I say that, as I said earlier, it kind of relates to your game day nutrition. Uh, the main emphasis on competition nutrition is going to be carb loading. Uh, like I talked about earlier, and I've talked about continuously, is uh, glycogen is your source of energy when you're exercising. So, um, one key thing to give you an edge in competition is the top off your uh, glycogen stores. Um, based on, the amount of glycogen you can hold is based on just the amount of muscle you have, and genetics and stuff like that. But if you could imagine uh, your glycogen store storage of capacity being a cup, uh, by carb loading you'll be filling that cup to the point where it's continuously overflowing. That way when you get to the actual competition it'll be at its maximum uh, amount. It's almost be like if you're taking a long trip in your car you're going to want to fill up the tank with a full tank of gas. Um, so that's the main emphasis uh, going into the game. A lot of times carb loading uh, athletes will start anywhere from three to four days uh, before the competition to really maximize those uh, energy stores. The next would be the uh, during the competition nutrition and at that point uh, things like sports drinks are going to be you're going to want to take those in. Uh, usually sports drinks will be about a six percent carbohydrate solution which is uh, I think it's like 14 grams of carbs per cup, which if you, I think if you drink it's two cups every 15 minutes, that will replace uh, both water and uh, energy at the same rate that you're losing it. Additionally, uh, sports drinks are good because they'll have electrolytes and stuff, which your body needs uh, during um, high bouts of physical exertion. Otherwise, you could you know, faint or whatever, and those are lost in sweat. And then... After the game is over, uh, the emphasis is going to be on, once again, refilling those energy stores for you know, your next practice the next day, and as well as uh, repairing the muscle. If any of you ever played sports, you know that um, the, the day after a game can be, you'll wake up in the morning and you'll almost not want to get out of bed, you'll be pretty sore. So it's important to get the right blend of carbs and protein uh, to kind of rebuild your body after uh, a game. Uh, most sources will say a blend of uh, a ratio of four to one uh, carbohydrates to protein is key uh, for that uh, purpose. And things that are good would be chocolate milk has the right amount of ratio usually, and then things that are kind of pre-formulated like the uh, the Gatorade series you see there. They have like the before, which is carb loading, and the during, which is maintenance, and then the after, which is kind of like a chocolate milk uh, ratio. Then the, uh, the final field of uh, emphasis 
for nutrition would be supplements. Um, supplements, if you don't know what those are, they're really, a supplement in its most general forms is anything that you put into your body that you don't get at all or don't get enough of through a normal diet. Um, some key things that most, most athletes will supplement with uh, would be, well, I kind of, before I go into that, I kind of divide supplements into two main categories, which are dietary, which uh, f really follow what I just said, and then um, competition or kind of performance enhancing ones, which are meant to give you an edge specifically uh, during the game. Now, um, there's a lot of supplements out there which are like illegal and stuff, which I'm not gonna talk about for the purposes of this. But anyway, for dietary supplements, the most popular ones are gonna be something like a protein powder, which athletes can take in uh, really uh, any time, but most specifically after uh, maybe a hard workout. I know that a lot of athletes like myself, uh, they tend to, athletes tend to lack uh, an appetite to eat like a full meal immediately after a workout. So um, supplements can provide you with uh, a quick source of nutrients without um, having to eat a large quantity of food. Um, another kind of subcategory of protein would be amino acids. Uh, without getting too scientific, pro all proteins are made up of amino acids, and those amino acids, uh, once they get into your body, are what builds your muscle. Um, I think there, there's 26 total amino acids, and of them, uh, your body can only make so many of them on its own. The rest of them have to come from uh, outside, from your diet. So supplements like this one that I have right here, um, they have what's called amino or essential amino acids in them, which are those uh, amino acids key to building muscle that your body can't make on its own. And then a uh, benefit to amino acid supplementation is um, certain, certain sources of protein, such as let's say you eat a steak, a steak is only gonna have a certain blend of amino acids. So um, if you're looking to get a, a particular set of amino acids, they're not, not all foods are created equal and they're like makeup of amino acids. And then another thing with protein is um, a lot of times athletes will just take the protein if, if they're on like a calorie restricted diet and they're not gonna be able to eat hamburger or something which has more fat than protein, they're gonna wanna get the most amount of protein without uh, consuming additional sources of nutrients from carbs or fat if they're on like a calorie restricted diet. Next I have the competition um, category of supplements which is really gonna be the two big ones that are like legal and legal for sports that is, and uh, like that are taken widely would be creatine, which I have an example of here. Creatine, if you're here for Reggie's presentation, uh, is kind of the source of energy uh, your muscles use for short burst. Uh, for, less, for example, in football, uh, you'll have about high intensity for 10 seconds, and then you'll rest for 30 seconds. Uh, the creatine phosphate system is what uh, kind of fuels that, and by supplementing, supplementing with creatine, um, you can maximize your creatine phosphate stores within your muscles. It's almost kind of like a different form of carb loading. And then also uh, stimulants uh, can be taken for games. Uh, the most basic one that everyone knows and probably everyone consumes on a daily basis would be caffeine. Uh, stimulants are going to increase mental awareness and also um, reaction time, stuff like that, stuff that can give you an edge in the game. I've got a little less than a minute left, so I'm going to talk real briefly about my action component, which was I was given the opportunity uh, to work with Purdue on an ongoing effort to kind of reorganize and make uh, their training tables, which is where the, I guess you could call them like the profit sports eat at, which would be uh, football, men and women's basketball, and then women's uh, volleyball. Uh, so basically what I did, I'm working with a group of dietitians and we like surveyed uh, dietitian majors. We surveyed the athletes, um, saw what they liked, see what they wanted, and we're still working on just really making that better. I'm out of time, so I can't really get into too much depth of that, but thanks for uh, your attention and have a great day.